Okay, welcome back, EENG 460, and this is going to be the part two of the uh, octal to decimal converter. Now, we ran it last time, and we showed that we could um, enter a, um, a decimal number. For example, here I enter 12, and then it uh, divides it down by 8, gets the remainder, and then prints it out in reverse. And uh, 12 base 10 is the same thing as 14 base 8. Okay? All right, so let's actually go through the, the code in a little detail here. We went through main last time, so now let's actually go through the procedures. Okay. So let me scroll up to here and find main. Okay. All right, there's my main routine. Now the first thing we do is we jump and link the lab, lab header. All right, well, let's go look at lab header. Where's that guy? Okay. All right, that's right down there, lab header. Okay. Now notice I have a no-op here. Oops, that should say lab header begin. Let's change that. Yeah, let's just say lab header there. And then um, down at the bottom, I have, oops, same thing, I don't have that either. Right, let's change that really quick. Lab header, all right, end. So I've got those no ops at the beginning and the end of this guy, so I can kind of read where it is in uh, QT spam. But the bottom line on this guy, what are we doing? We're just um, loading V0 with 4, we're loading the address of the string I want to type a uh, print out which is defined in the data segment and then I call syscall same thing load immediate uh, v04 load the address of a carriage return print a carriage return here we're printing out the lab number message here we're um, printing out another carriage return and then um, here I'm printing out student name and then here I'm printing out a carriage return here I'm printing out a date printing out a carriage return, another carriage return, and then down at the end, this procedure doesn't return anything, so what I do is I put zeros into V0 and V1, and then I just return back to where I was called. All right, so let's go uh, uh, look at the invocation, and then we'll run this guy in QT spim. Let me save that guy. All right, let's go back to QT spim, reinitialize, load, and there's my code. Now you can kind of see here, this is the beginning of my main program. Okay. First thing we're going to do is jump and link lab header. Okay. So if I scroll down to here, I can use those no-op comments to say, oh, here's my lab header right here. All right. There's where it starts, and there's where lab header begins. Now if you're trying to evaluate um, a, a procedure, now, well, first of all, this procedure is real trivial, right? You guys have been doing this for quite a while. But what we haven't been doing is using breakpoints. You know, people are just kind of running their programs and keeping their fingers crossed and hope they work. But let's say we want to debug this program. Okay, well, let's debug this procedure. Well, what I can do is I can go to the first instruction in there, which is at 0040, 0060, and it's in a load immediate. I could right-click, and I could say set a breakpoint. So the program will stop as soon as I call lab header, right? So let's go up here and we will, uh, all right, let's make everything, sure everything's set. I got my breakpoint right there, a little icon. Now let me just click the play button, okay? So notice what happened. We got this message. Execution stopped at breakpoint 0040-0060, all right? So it's at this address and it's saying, oh, there's a breakpoint, I'm going to stop. Do you want to abort the program? you know, stop the program altogether. Do you want to continue, uh, ignore the breakpoint, or do you want to single step through? Well, I want to single step through. All right, so I'm going to click single step. So now, what it did is it put me right here. It stopped the program, and now I can step through it. So at this point, you want to use F10. So what you've right, done right now in this procedure is you've put V0, or put 4 into V0. So let's go check V0, and V0 has 4. Now let's go back to here and use F10. So I use F10. And now what I did is I put the address of course name message into A0. Let's go look at that. There's A0. All right, there's the address of that string I want to print out. Okay, so you know, things are good. You're basically just stepping through. And now I'm going to hit F10 again, and we should get some output to our console window. And we do. That was the name, computer architecture. Okay. And then the same thing. Now you can just kind of step through. And when I step over syscall, I should get another string. Okay, oh, that was the carriage return, all right? And you can kind of verify the carriage return work because if I clicked in here, the cursor is below that string. And then same thing here, you know, we're printing out lab number message. There's the uh, up lab six number systems. And then uh, come down to here, we do the same thing. Another carriage return, student name, oh, that's me. And then uh, it says call another carriage return. Date message, it says call, there's the date, all right? It says call carriage return, another carriage return. And then we now here we're going to jump back to the main, and there you go. So now you're back into the main program, 
and uh, you've kind of just stepped through that procedure all right and then we can kind of if we want to just run it full bore at this point we can run along here we can enter a value let's just do one two three four five six and we know that's three six one one zero all right so that is the um that's the first procedure nothing but printing out strings all right so that's good now let's come down here and look at uh, init registers okay notice we're not passing any parameters but we are returning two values v0 goes into s0 v1 goes into s1 let's look at init registers hey okay, here's your init register <coughs> oh excuse me <coughs> Got a little comment here. I've got my label. I've got my uh, jump return. But once again, I have my no op stuff to let me know where this guy begins and ends. And this one, all it's going to do is it's just going to uh, explicitly put eat into V0 and 0 into V1 and return it. This guy's going to be the base that we're converting to. And this is going to be the offset from the global pointer at which we're going to start writing our data. So that's pretty trivial, right? It just uh, puts two things in V0, V1, and then back in main, we pull it out. Okay, we pull it out and we put it into some uh, safe temporary registers, S0 and S1. All right, let's go to QT spin. Let's reinitialize. And let's say, you know, that maybe this procedure is a little more complicated, but we want to test it. So how do we test it? Well, what we do is we kind of find it. There's where we jump and link init registers. And then come down to our code on the right-hand side and try to find that. And, you know, I use those no-op statements to figure out where it is. Well, there's the procedure right there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to left right click here left click set a breakpoint so I've set a breakpoint at the first instruction in there and now I am going to run it now notice uh, the first procedure already got called because we have some output so I'm gonna single step and let's see I'm gonna double check and make sure everything's working did I put 8 into V0 yeah I sure did where's 8 there it is right there okay let's go back to our text hit an F10 to step over did I put 0 into V1? Well, let's just go check it. You know, yep, 0 is in V1 right there. All right, we're good. And then um, when I jump return, I go back to the main procedure. And then that's where I move those guys out. But V0 had 8 and V1 had 1. And then in the main, I can just step over those and verify that those guys get put into S0 and S1. S0, did it get put into S0? Yeah. Yeah. There's V0, got put into S0. There's V1, got put into S1. So, you know, you kind of use that uh, breakpoint to single step through and just kind of check out each single instruction and make sure it works. All right, let's, uh, now that we feel confident with the knit registers, let's just move on and um, uh, finish up the program. I just hit the play button to continue. And if I type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we get 3, 6, 1, 1, 0, normal termination. All right, so that was the first two procedures. I'm going to stop here because it's getting kind of long, and then we'll take a look at the other procedures in subsequent videos. Okay, thanks for watching.